안녕하십니까? Nicolas Imida and on this video I would like to tell you the reasons why I think this year 2023 should be the year when you finally learn Flutter. First, I would like to sell you Flutter a little bit and tell you the reasons why I think learning it is a great way to invest your time. Then, because I want to be intellectually honest with you, we're going to see some of the shortcomings the framework has. Because everything has its trade-offs. When working with Flutter, we have to make some compromises and we're going to see what they are. And finally, I am going to tell you what is the number one biggest mistake that people make when learning Flutter and how to avoid it. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. Flutter, if you don't know what it is, is a framework made by Google that allows developers to build multi-platform applications using only one programming language. When I first tried Flutter back in 2018, multi-platform meant iOS and Android. But the Flutter team did not stop there. And now multi-platform means iOS, Android, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, web, and embedded devices. That is an incredible value proposition, especially for people that like to build things. For makers and entrepreneurs that want to be able to build prototypes and test ideas on multiple platforms as quick as possible. Being able to build something for all of these platforms using only one framework and one programming language gives creative people an incredible power. Flutter is a force multiplier. Now, Flutter is the framework. Dart is the programming language. Dart has a great developer experience and is incredibly easy to learn if you already know JavaScript, Java, Kotlin, and even C Sharp. The cool thing about Dart and Flutter is that because they're both Google products, their teams can work very close to each other. This is great because that means that when Flutter needs a feature and Dart doesn't have that feature, the Dart team can just build it for them. For example, initially Dart did not have a head of time compilation, but now it does because Flutter needed it to produce faster apps. Other frameworks usually don't have this advantage. They don't have this level of influence over the language and the virtual machine they use, but Flutter does. The developer experience in Flutter is also something to highlight. Developer tools of the framework are almost at the same level with native development. On developer tools, Flutter blows React Native out of the water. On the commercial side, many big companies are betting heavily on Flutter. From BMW to ByteDance, Tencent, eBay, Nubank, Toyota, and even Google themselves. They literally rewrote the Google Pay app used by millions of users from scratch with Flutter. The new app has 35% less lines of code, down to 1.1 million from 1.7 million. And they estimate that they have saved between 60 and 70% of the engineer's time. This shows you the commitment and trust that Google has on the framework. And it eases the fears of lots of people, including me, that thought maybe Google was going to kill Flutter the way it kills many of its products. Because I know I make it sound like Flutter is the perfect framework, Framework, let's now talk about the issues it has because if something is too good to be true it probably is at the end of the day flutter is a cross-platform framework and just like with the other cross-platform frameworks you won't have the same level of control that you would have if you were building a native app while building your app you might find out that there are some things the framework doesn't officially support but from experience usually you will be able to find a community made plugin that does what you need this has always been the case for me when working with flutter because of how big and active the community is but nevertheless nothing compares to being able to use the apis that the phone has directly rather than trying to find community packages and hoping that they work and that they are up to date the way flutter works is by basically rendering a canvas on the screen of the user and painting the UI of the app using a custom graphics engine, which is what makes Flutter so cross-platform. Anywhere it goes, the framework paints a canvas and builds its own UI. But because of this, two things happen. Number one, Flutter apps are a bit heavier than normal apps because your app has to be packaged and distributed with your code plus the graphics engine code. And number two, may or may not be a problem depending on your goals. If we take a look at Apple Music, we can see that this is an app that looks, feels, and smells like Apple. It's using Apple design language, 
buttons, animations, navigation, gestures, etc. Because as we said, Flutter has its own graphics engine, Flutter apps can't use any of the host platform's UI components. You could recreate all the styles manually and try to make a button that looks just like an iOS button, or you can use any of the pre-made components that try to look like iOS, but they are not the real deal and it's easy to notice. So if you want to build apps that look and feel native to the phone and the host platform, maybe Flutter isn't a good choice. But this isn't a problem and it's actually good news when your app has a design language of its own. If we take a look at Duolingo, for example, or TikTok, or Grab, or Waking Up, we can see that these apps are apps that do not use the design language of the platform they are in. They have custom made designs of their own. And on this Flutter excels. With Flutter you own every pixel of the screen. Because you are not bound to the constraints of the platform you are in, you can implement whatever crazy UI your designer made. Like what you are looking at right now. That is an app built with Flutter with a very custom UI, animations and gestures created to showcase the new graphics engine Flutter is going to get. So to conclude, the shortcomings of Flutter are the shortcomings of many other cross-platform frameworks that suffer from a lack of official API support and make us rely on not so stable community plugins. And also, because of how Flutter is built, our app won't be able to use the UI components of the host platform, which depending on how you look at it, it might or may not be a good thing because that gives us the chance to implement our own custom UI. At the end of the day, a cross-platform app will always be a guest on the phone and not a first class citizen, which may or may not be a deal breaker for you depending on what your app needs. This is of course not a complete list of the good and the bad of the Flutter framework and you should not base your opinions on what people on the internet say anyways. Before you read the comments of people telling you how good or bad Flutter is, just try it out and evaluate it by yourself. The framework is so easy to learn, the community and documentation are so good that there isn't a reason not to try it. If you're still watching and you want to learn Flutter, you need to avoid the mistake many people, including me, make when learning Flutter, and that is learning Flutter first. Because Flutter sounds so exciting, people just go to the Flutter website or buy a Flutter course and start learning right away. The problem with doing that is that they are skipping a very important part, and that is Dart. Dart is the language that powers Flutter. And if you skip Dart completely and just go and try to learn Flutter, you're still going to learn Flutter, but your progress will be very slow. If you skip Dart and jump straight into Flutter, when you see Flutter code for the first time, you won't know if this weird looking code is weird because of the syntax of Dart or if it's something related to Flutter itself. I did this. I jumped straight to Flutter without first learning at least the basics of Dart. And because of this, it took me a longer time to be productive in Flutter than I would like to admit. This is why I created two courses aimed at people that are absolute Flutter beginners. The first course is Dart for Beginners. This is a free two hour course where we don't talk about Flutter. We just write Dart code. We learn the basics and we understand what makes Dart special and different from other programming languages. And we learn the features of the language that Flutter uses the most. It is not a full guide into the Dart language because Dart is too big. Instead, it is just a guide that gives you exactly what you need to feel comfortable when learning Flutter for the first time. Nothing else and nothing more. When you finish that course, you will be ready to jump into the second course, Flutter for Beginners. That is a free, free, free seven hour course where you will go from not knowing anything about Flutter to building three apps, including a productivity app and a webtoon discovery app. We will learn how to build UIs with Flutter, interactivity, widgets, life cycles, data fetching, navigation, and more. You can enroll to both courses right now for free. All you have to do is click the links below. That's it for this video. Yorobun, Tsehebokmani, Padaseo. Thank you for watching in 2022. I wish you an Hembokan 2023. Onudo, Kamsahago, Saranhago, Taumebayo. See you on the next one. Bye bye.